Does anybody see my glasses? They're where? Oh. oh, that's much better. I'd be lost without my glasses. Without them, it would be hard for me to see anything. There could be an angel sitting right here in front of me, and I probably wouldn't even see him except as a big white blur. In our Bible story tonight, we're going to hear about another angel. The people in that story didn't have any trouble seeing the angel, but the problem was that they didn't see exactly the same thing that the angel saw. Let's read the story together. This is from Mark chapter 16, beginning in verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought aromatic spices, those are spices that smell really good, so that they might go and anoint his body. And very early on the first day of the week at sunrise, they went to the tomb. They had been asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled back. Then, as they went into the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples, even Peter, that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. Then they went out and ran from the tomb, for terror and bewilderment had seized them. They were still very afraid. And they said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. So that angel that we just heard about told a different story. It saw a different thing than the women that came to the tomb saw. After Jesus died on the cross, he was buried very quickly. And the women who were disciples of his didn't get the chance to prepare his body for burial like they would have liked. So on Easter morning, after the Passover and after the Sabbath was passed when they were allowed to do work again, they got a bunch of spices together and they went to the grave to honor him by finishing preparing his body. They didn't even know how or who was going to open the tomb for them. They were so concerned with what they had to do to prepare Jesus' body. And guess what they found when they got there? The tomb was already open. The stone had been rolled away. And instead of Jesus dead lying in the tomb, they found an angel sitting there. And an angel that had a very different story. The women looked inside and they saw that Jesus was missing. And their first thought was someone took and carried him away and put him in a different tomb. But the angel knew the full story. And he told them that Jesus wasn't missing, but he was alive again. And that he'd simply gone somewhere else. In fact, he went someplace that he had told the women and his disciples that he was going to be after he raised from the dead. But they didn't remember that he told them that. They didn't understand exactly what that meant yet. So it seems like we're living in the same world as the angels, but the angels see things very, very differently from us. A missing Jesus would have been very sad. They loved him very much. And all of a sudden to find out he was gone as if someone had taken him, that disturbed them very, very much. And that same kind of sadness would be with us today, too, because if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, where would we be? Would our sins be forgiven? Would we have eternal life? No, we wouldn't. It was imperative, important, that Jesus rose from the dead. Now we can see, like the angel saw, that Jesus is very much alive. And our hearts are filled with as much joy on Easter as those women and his disciples when they saw that he was alive. Because Jesus alive again forever means that you and I will live forever. Our bodies will die someday, but like Jesus, our bodies will rise from the grave again when he comes on Judgment Day. And it will take all of us to live with him forever in a place where 
We don't have to stay home because of a virus. We can go to school. We can play. We can do anything we want. But the biggest thing we'll get to do is to worship God in this perfect place without sin forever and ever. Now listen to the church service tomorrow morning for Easter and see if you can learn some more things about angels and most importantly, some more things about us and what Jesus has done for us. Thank you.